In this video traders, we're gonna look at lessons in trading that have lasted over a hundred years. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so as we know, lessons in trading are almost timeless. In fact, they are timeless. You read reminiscence of a stock operator, you know that those lessons are true then as they are today. This book, which is Studies in Tape Reading by Wyckoff, aka Rollo Tape, originally produced in 1910. Unfortunately, this is not an original. This is a reproduction. You can see they kind of reproduced it and zoomed it into the, um, into the pages. Really interesting read, a bit dry at times, but you know, at the end of the day, guys, this stuff is so, so useful because the little nuggets that you pick up in Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, things like this, all these old manuscripts almost look they're like the bible of trading you know these guys had nothing but literally prints coming through just prints 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 and you know tape reading is basically price action now you know some people say tape reading is more focused on kind of the, the, the flow of of uh, on time and sales and the market depth and yes perhaps it is but this what they call tape reading is price action it's how price is responding it's how quickly it's moving it's how it's moving relative to other stocks all the stuff that we talk about with price action guys so you know, I love these kind of books and uh, it, it, I, I recommend it. It's not for everybody, um, but it's interesting. If you see one lying around in a bookstore you're in, it's worth grabbing a copy. Uh, it's not like one of the one of the top kind of 10 books out there, uh, some better ones, but you know, if you're into trading and stuff, uh, it's quite cool. But anyway, what I want to talk about in this video, guys, is some of the lessons in this book that was written in 1910 that have lasted over 100 years and are so true today. Just maybe a slight little different twist on them, but so true today. So first one is mental poise i love this uh, the uh, the language used back there right so how do you feel after a string of losses S human nature is identical guys money was still money then yes the value is slightly different but it still has that meaning to us how do we feel after a string of losers how do you feel after a string of losers pretty crap not great it's also understanding then not to get involved in the markets when we're feeling like that if you're a subscriber appreciate by the way your support sharing stuff liking it i know you guys do that and it is much appreciated but we talk about emotional thermometer we talk about hey you know if you're feeling too excited too sad too frustrated too angry just to dial it in a bit maybe take a step back and not be too involved with the market it's exactly what it says in this book number two one may be trading too often we know this guys over trading kills is it something i have to be especially aware of i ultimately want to be aggressive in the market I want to trade I want to trade at the end of the day guys we want to make money and we think if we want to make money we need to be in the markets, and that's true, but also got to be mindful of the losses that occur. And over trading, when you've got no edge, you're not at a place that you want to be trading, you're not at a key level, you're not at a setup, not a strategy that works for you, and just wanting to be engaged with the market all the time. Uh, it was hitting people back in the 1900s as it was uh, as for us today. Anxiety to make a record. So in other words, that means forcing profits, trying to force something. There's some similarities here, obviously, but trying to force profits. I like to think that's maybe trying to stretch that profit target too far or trying to get something out of a market that's not conducive to it. It's forcing things. You know you've probably been there yourself. You tried to force trades that aren't really ready, they're not ready, the conditions aren't right, and it's kind of a combination of overtrading and one I'm going to look at in a moment which is the market is unsuitable, high conditions are poor. Listen guys, we've talked about uh, if you're using the right uh, strategy for the right conditions, if it's trending condition, we're using a trending trend trading strategy. Range back condition mean reversion, we use a mean reversion trading strategy. But going one step further than that, if the market's really not moving much and it does go through spells, goes through spells of months, if, if longer perhaps it's not moving so much, then you know you can't get blood out of a stone and you might have to switch strategy you might have to switch markets you might have to switch so if it's a grinding uptrend not really conducive it's kind of mean reversion intraday kind of multi opportunity long and short it might be something to buy and hold for a swing trade or you look to another market so you know conditions are poor is something that you've got to be well aware of today just as you have years ago a poor service from your broker so <laughs> Last final one, not so relevant now, fills are pretty much instant, spreads are tight, so, so cheap to trade. We've got such a, a huge amount of brokers that we we can use, and we've got one in the description below if you wanna check one out for spread betting. You know, have a look at that one but you know there's so many out there guys regulated ones and they're all reasonably good you know the spreads are reasonably tight and compared to kind of what you were dealing with 
you know, back in these days, we've got it good. But you know what, we still gotta be careful. We've got the right charting platform that's not going down on us, the brokers allowing us to execute trades in a quick market and a fast market, that's always a good one. Um, you know, that we, we, we don't get, you know, some huge amounts of slippage when orders aren't being held for us. So even though it's not the same as them calling the floor uh, and getting a really bad fill as it was back in those days, um, or over the wires or over Telegram, it's, it's completely different now but it's still important to have the right broker, the right tool for the job. All right, guys, that is lessons that have lasted over a hundred years. Uh, some of them from this studies and tape reading book, which is a pretty cool book. Uh, if you've got any more that you've got, if you've got any, also guys, this is a good thing. If you've got any kind of book recommendations for real obscure old books that have kind of been reproduced or maybe there's an odd copy on eBay or something, then please stick it in the comment section below. Sometimes you come across these little nuggets and you think well, it's the same game today as it was all those years ago. Take care, whatever you're doing guys, bye-bye.